Welcome back to the channel. My name is Adam Smith, and inside this video, we're diving into the finale for Primal Challenge number two from Reggie Games. This is Primal The Awakening, and if you haven't checked out my part number one, you'll want to do so to understand how we got to where we're currently at. I'll put a link to it in the top right hand corner right now. If you're looking for the challenge information or for the storefront for Primal The Awakening, I have those in the video description and pinned comment. Without further ado, we'll dive right into gameplay, and we're picking things up right after going ahead and using two potions, one for each character that took away four damage from each of them. Moving on to monster upkeep, this is the one being changed out and a new one coming in. And also struggles gonna increase by two, bringing us to three. Darian is the aggro character, so he's gonna take the first player token. Special rule for the scenario says that this monster is gonna look in the sector it's facing and place sand at the start of a new turn, which is gonna be the start of Darian's turn here. So it's placing sand in that sector, which is unfortunate because it removes the 20 points we would have gotten if we had kept at least one sector free of sand. That's unfortunate, but we're working around a lot of factors. A few things to mention here. First off, the monster is hardened. Also, we have a new behavior icon. This one here with the claw means if we start our turn in a flank section, which in this case, based on how the monster is turned, we would be here or here. Then we're gonna go ahead and have that behavior resolve. Don't have to worry about it right now. We are starting our turn with Darian here. He's sitting in the north sector. There's fire there, so we can't play anything into a sequence. He wants to get out of there. Plus on top of the fact there's a dust token in here, not good. And also that nasty plant. He's probably gonna move to a flank sector so he can actually make an attack because the front sector is not an option right now. I'm gonna have Darian swing around to the flank side. It's gonna cost me two stamina, which is actually pretty costly in this situation, being that every card I have in my hand right now is only worth one stamina, so that's not good. Now, another special rule for this challenge, which is making things difficult for me, is that I cannot use an assist keyword in this situation anymore because now there's sand in every single location, so everywhere is blocked for the purposes of assisting another character. And because I moved, I also removed the threatened token, so that's gone. Now I'm gonna place this one into my sequence. It's gonna cost me one. It's gonna go ahead and remove this one. This actually hurts me deeply because I really wanted to make use of this extra three damage, but it will give me one stamina to pay for this. So going in the discard pile, now I also have some defense here, which is good. I get to draw a card right away. So we'll go ahead and draw that card up and see what it is. We got ourselves balanced defense. Next, we're gonna play a red card to do an attack. This is Dragon Strike. The assist keyword does not matter in this case, and we do not get that nice sequence flow to get a draw of a card. I'm gonna be discarding this card from hand for one to pay for this. Pulls the aggro token, but I already have it. This is gonna do the base weapon damage, which is four. Now, the thing is, if I had another uh, stamina to spend, I could have increased this based on the Dragon Claw by three, but I do not at this point in time, unfortunately. I also did not pay using this icon here, which comes from a blue or a red card, so I don't get an additional two from that either. Either, so just a straight four damage. It wasn't a bad attack, but we need 14 damage to get a wound, so we definitely have some work to do. We also triggered a behavior card. Voice of Destruction. Oh no, this is not good. The active player suffers damage unless you discard a yellow card from their hand, and I have no cards left in hand. That is not good, so that is two damage, bringing me back to six. With that now resolved, we're gonna go to the attrition check. I do have one defense, so feeling somewhat okay, and I'm not threatened, so I don't have to draw two of these cards. We're drawing one only. Let's see how we do. Come on, block it. No, we're gonna get hit by damage. It's gonna be another two damage. That, my friends, is not good. We're currently up to eight damage. We can only sustain 10 here on Darien, or we get KO'd. We discarded our sequence, drew up to five cards, and also the monster faces the aggro character, which is Darien, so it's facing west. Start of a new turn, the monster tries to place sand in that sector, but it's already there, so instead it places a dust token. Now as Thorig begins his turn, the downside is he's starting his turn in the flank sector of the monster now, which is not good. So we're triggering this behavior card, which then is going to trigger this behavior card, so we have two of them to resolve. The card is called Wing Attack. It says to place a dust token in each of the flank sectors, max two dust tokens per sector. Each player in those sectors are gonna suffer damage unless they reveal two defensive symbols from their hand. And unfortunately for Thorag, he's only got one defensive symbol in his hand because we have used cards previously. So he's got a very small hand limit based on what he did at the tail end of part number one. So unfortunately he is suffering two damage. So now he's on a total of seven damage. He's got 11 health, so getting up there, not good. Next one here says Dragon Fire increase the hardening level by one. It's already maxed out. And place a dust token in the front sector. Oh my gosh, there's gonna be lots of dust tokens out there. All right, we're all squared away. Now we can decide for Thorag if he wants to try and move or he's gonna stay in position. 
I don't have any cards in my hand, but I'm going to use one right now to pay the stamina cost of two to get out of this sector into the rear sector. I want to make a hit that's going to knock down the hardening level. I'm going to take advantage of my red scale helm, which allows me as an action to discard the top card of our deck. If the card's a red one, we get to keep it. Otherwise, it just goes in the discard pile. Here's hoping. And we landed it. We got Iron Blast. This is a good one, although it costs a lot of stamina. I'm going to go ahead and use this expensive red card now. It's going to cost me three stamina to do so, and I've got the cards I need to make it happen. Both of these being discarded to pay for that cost. The aggro token has come over, and also as part of this attack, which is going to do four base damage, it's also going to trigger the counters on the Skull Shock being thrown away at this point, because there's three here, and it's going to allow us to stun the monster as we're attacking from the rear, so the hardening has dropped from level three to two. And on top of that, we also get to make use of the Thunder Armor, because I have emptied out my hand, I get to deal an additional three damage. So we now have 12 damage here, which is pretty good. And we have a stun token, which I placed on one of the behavior cards, but it's not really going to matter because it's near the end of the turn and none of these behavior cards are going to trigger anyway. And at the end of the round, in just a short minute or so, uh, that's going to disappear anyway. So not the greatest timing for that stun to trigger, but you know what? We get the damage on there and that is a plus. The other benefit that comes along with stun is you get to choose another character in play. So Darien would be that other character. And for every red card I have, I can throw my weapon damage at the monster up to two times. So unfortunately, this is, I think, the only time he's never had any red cards in his hand. So we don't get any advantage from that either, making the stun even more painful to have used right now. And the one thing that we get out of this is that we did stun the monster. So because of this, another counter on the master here. So we flip this over and we've completed it. This mastery cards can allow us to deal some damage with blue cards in our sequence. And if we have a blue card and two red, we get to stun the monster. So we have a little bit more going for us. We're now onto the attrition check, which is not going to be good because my defenses have been extremely weak lately and having only three cards to start off their eggs turn did not help in that department. We've got nothing for defense. So we want to see a zero here and it was a one. So that is going to be two damage. All right, so I've added the damage, also gone ahead and discarded cards in the sequence as we're done at Thorag's turn. Drawn back up, but the deck was depleted, so we take fatigue damage of one. This is not good, so I guess we'll just go ahead now and flip one of these over to a five and get rid of these other ones. We are one away from a KO here, and on the other side, just two damage away from a KO. It's not looking good. We're into end around triggers now. All the dust tokens are going to be removed. The one fire token is going to wane. And we transition into round number five. And when we go into a brand new round, we take a look right here. We have a peril card that says increase the hardening level by one. So it's right back up to being fully hardened again. And in addition, we also remove the stun token from the behavior card. Time for a behavior refresh and increase on struggle. Thank goodness it didn't hit six. It's going to go up to five. The one we're losing from the behavior row is going to be this one right here, which is the tail one. That'll do it for the monster upkeep. We now move into player turns. So again, the monster is staring at Thorig right now. And Thorig has sand in his sector, which is on the east side of the game board. So one dust token going there. And unfortunately, Thorig is starting off in the front sector of the monster. So this behavior card right here is triggering. Oh no, it is the burning eye. This says the monster's gonna gain struggle per character, which is two. That's not good. If it was in stance three, something else would happen. But this two additional struggle by itself is gonna push things into an unleash. And unfortunately, the two damage that's coming from the unleash to both of my characters is gonna put them both in a state of being KO'd. We're currently at eight damage here, so two more makes it 10. That is a KO right there. And then over here with Thorig, getting just one more would put him into a KO situation. And just like that, when all the characters are KO'd, you lose the battle. Now this is my very first attempt at primal challenge number two. So of course off camera, I'll be trying once more to see if I can push through trying to get this challenge completed. So now it's up to you. You'll be able to go yourself, set it up per the instructions, which you can find in the video description and pinned comment links to those instructions. And you'll be able to try and tackle this challenge on your own. Let me know in the comments down below how you do. If you know your point score at the end, also let us know in the comments. It'd be a fun to come back and reference to see how well people are doing overall thank you guys so much for watching really hope you enjoyed this look at primal challenge number two had a blast with it my two characters here are hunters didn't so much enjoy it as they were crushed under the weight of the monster so thanks so much for watching and as always keep on rolling solo